everyone. It's Joe from Lucas. Hope you guys have an amazing day. I got the big guy with me. How you guys doing? It's National Champagne Day. And we love champagne. And you know we do. And we got Dave. Hi, how are you? Dave's hey. excited. Dave's the guy who uh, we get these from. So he's the guy that goes to France and finds kick-ass kick butt champagne. That's and, uh, nice. I know. Right, live on video. That's I fine. Know. Okay. That's the way I do. But anyway. Please. So is it Colette or Colette? Colette. I just, I, I got corrected, Chicago, so I wanted to talk about Chicago's it. Chicago's Colette. Okay, that's okay. fine. That's fine. <laughs> All right, this is, you know, what, what we want to really talk about is champagne is one of those things that's going to be a challenge as we come into the holidays. Absolutely. And we really got to be looking at our champagne a little bit earlier this year. There's some uh, supply chain issues, distribution issues. Demand is up, supply is down on champagne yes. right now. And these are really spectacular. Absolutely. So let's talk about them a little bit. Talk about Tell me about the grapes a little bit. Tell me about what goes in them. Sure. Tell me about sure. the, the... Usually there's going to be three grapes in these. You want Dave, Dave, you want to start three? opening that? Yeah. So do we all can... three are represented in this wine. That's correct. Pinot Noir, Pinot Mignur, and Chardonnay. What's, this, what's the second Pinot one? Pinot Mignur. Say it. Come on. I'm it's not... like Cabernet Sauvignon. So, you know? so tell me about that grape a little bit. So I'm so not familiar with that grape. It's one of the red grapes. So there's two reds and a white that goes into a, a champagne. Okay. These are blended up. So me as the winemaker or you as the winemaker, you're going to go, okay, I grow these grapes, but what do I want to do this year? Is my Chardonnay a little sweet? Is my uh, Pinot Noir a little So we little balance acidic? it with those. Absolutely. Because okay. I'm trying to put out the same champagne every year. I don't want a big um, difference in flavor and quality. I want my champagne every year to be just And these are good. all French champagnes, Absolutely. right? These are, Correct. they're from Absolutely. there. All right, let's fire this one up. So we wanted to just to walk you through how to open a bottle of champagne since there is about three to four times the pressure uh, in this bottle that there is in tires on your car. Yep. Okay. So we this is a, a special bottle. We have a cork that's enclosed or enc encased in a capsule, uh, excuse me, a wire cage here. You want to keep your hand over the top of the cork Trust Unwind me. the cage, then tilt the bottle at about 45 degrees, keeping your hand on the cork and turning the bottle very slowly until the cork pushes itself out. Perfect. Look, that was boring. I know. I know. Well, that was boring. Like I, I was expecting it. like, you know, smack myself in the nose. And all right. All well, how do we, how do we pour these? Let's pour some. Let's, let's get the guys. These are great champagnes. So, so price wise, and we'll talk about them, but this one's 40. So thirty nine ninety nine. We're in a retail business, I okay? Know. What's this one? That one's forty nine ninety nine. So this is the rosé. Yes, sir. And then this is the big boy. That's the big boy. Seventy nine ninety nine. And that this is going to be a vintage champagne. This is a two thousand six. So, oh what? I didn't. Yeah, two thousand six. Yeah. Dude. Vintage. And so, so explain what single vineyard is, so people well, know. Well, it's not single vineyard. It's it's a vintage champagne. I shouldn't have okay. said that. Okay. Which just means that okay, in two thousand six, my grapes were so damn good. That My stuff was the best we can call vintage. Okay. Now, okay. Just because I say it is, there's going to be a organization that's going to come in and say, Oh, you're right. You have grapes that are good enough. You have champagne good enough to call oh, it vintage. It, that's how you get it. Not every year do we get vintage. Okay. Oh, I didn't and know that. To get an aged champagne. To Dave, come on up here. Why are you sitting back there? Is really cool. Okay. So, that's pretty cool. So let's talk about this one, Dave. Tell me so. Sure. Tell me a little bit about it. So this is Colet's right. flagship wine. This is called Art Deco Brut. And if we were going to taste just one wine today, it would be this one. As as Kent said, it's a blend, blend of three different grapes. It's, it's also delicious. made from some reserve oh. wines. This is a non-vintage product, so we try to produce this in exactly oh, yeah. the same manner every year. Wow, it's delicious, isn't it? So this is 50% Pinot Noir, 30. Oh, sorry, 40% Pinot Noir, 40% Chardonnay, 20% Pinot Meunier. Pinot Meunier. I'm really trying to learn that grape. Yes. The cousin to the Pinot Noir, a little bit lighter. Chardonnay adds elegance to the wine. Pinot Noir adds body. And Pinot Meunier adds freshness. So depending depending on what style you're going for, for you would blend them in different proportions. Collet is a very fruit-forward, fresh style. And you can really pick that up on here. It's got this toasted biscuit on the nose, this Absolutely. light dancing fruit flavor on the palate, and a really kind of sugar cookie, city. you know? Yeah, hey, a little sugar cookie. Absolutely. Like, you know what the thing that comes to me is, what I love bubbly for is anytime I start a party with bubbly, it's a party. Absolutely. The minute you open up a bottle of bubbly, it's just fun. <laughs> I, I, I mean, it doesn't matter when you have it too. You could have it for brunch, you could have it for lunch, you could have it for Absolutely. dinner, or you could have it as nightcap. Breakfast, we know how it yeah. goes. I, awesome. I will have breakfast out, Kent. <laughs> yeah, and if you don't have a bottle of champagne in the refrigerator at home, you're not ready for a party. Right? I agree or with a that. Celebration. Awesome. I just love bubblies. I love bubblies. So what I what I like about this, 
from my standpoint, is it's extremely smooth and easy to drink. And I know that's not how, may, how maybe we describe champagne, but it's not, it, it's not overly dry. It's actually got a, it's got a, it's just really beautiful and delicate Absolutely. and easy to drink. It's like a couch wine. Absolutely. It's delicious. Yeah. It's so, a, Dave, I have a question. Yes, is this please. the same wine, but only added, throw in a little red? No, so it's a little bit different. This is a, a different proportion of Pinot Noir, Chardonnay, and Pinot okay. Meunier. So this is 50% Pinot Noir, 30% Chardonnay, and 20% Pinot Meunier. So you kick okay. up the red and have to get that rosé. Right, and what we do is we actually make a blend, the, the champagne blend out of the red and white grapes. Then we vinify Pinot Noir. About 15% of the total quantity of this body is still red wine that we add back in to get the color that we're looking nice, for. Nice, nice. So, so it, it, you know, bottom line is it's National Champagne Day. Absolutely. And, and I can tell you this. These are stunning bottles. These are great bottles. They're Joe's picks. I, I absolutely love these. I do too. You know, they're just great drinking. I think they're really priced aggressive for the market. Yeah, absolutely. When you guys look at these on Vivino, these are just great champagnes. They challenge everybody in the category. Thank you very much for bringing them to us and introducing Pleasure. them to us. I mean, they're just great ones, and, and they're ones that I think our customers are going to truly enjoy. Absolutely. Guys, happy Champagne Day. Cheers. Thanks for watching our video. Share us, like us, comment on him. We appreciate you. Always leave.